Good morning, folks. Severe weather in focus today, nearly every kind. We'll jump out to the magnetosphere and to Mars at the end, but we're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. The features of note today are the dark coronal holes gracing the polar crowns, one bright spot near the equator turns towards the departing limb, from ionized iron to ionized helium returns we reveal a block party of planet-sized plasma filaments dancing over the incoming limb on the south and the dissipation of that gathering at the end. Looking at a tiny bud to the X-ray solar flare readings this morning, that one little bright area on the sun is in fact a sunspot group and the morphology has had it on the precipice of flaring every few hours. Right now, we have a lateral beta grouping that is leaving Earth-facing position tonight. Let's look next to the solar wind. Telemetry continues calming and so does geomagnetism. Low cosmic ray advisory ongoing with a chart KP average of 0.2 here. This shouldn't last much longer as intensified solar wind from the coronal holes is expected at Earth late in the weekend. Geomagnetic conditions should stir back up. Let's go to India. Cyclone Gaja took a monster line across the southern portion of the subcontinent. This is the ocean as the storm approached, and once it arrived, the wind was the major problem. At least 25 have been confirmed dead from the cyclone, and the flooding in the aftermath has forced nearly 100,000 to flee. Many more than that have fled in Afghanistan, 3.5 million people under life-threatening drought conditions. The rains they expect this time of year have been pounding Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and regions further east pretty much all season. Up next, we're going down under. Severe thunderstorms, strong winds, hail, and flash flooding were the story in Queensland, Australia. Eastern half of the nation is taking a lot of these hailstorms the last three weeks. And then, of course, there's the cold. Shattering Syracuse snow records, stranding children at school, becoming deadly across a number of states, and of course, those cold records have been getting mowed down as the storm marches east. Interesting story up next out of Texas describing how crater lakes on Mars overflowed. Electrical theories on carved canyons aside, this study aimed to verify the water presence in the past and did so. A lot of it. Turns out these craters were like natural reservoirs long ago on the Red Planet. Top story today follows the MMS mission and their look at plasma concentrations during space weather events. Now whether you like the connection of double layers, electric circuit breach, or standard magnetic reconnection science, the magnetic explosions described are of critical importance. Today we are learning that while tail separations are symmetrical on both sides of the disconnection, this is not what happens at the day side. There is a significant surplus of ions funneled north of the equator towards the North Pole. It is not symmetric and is in fact quite biased. This is critical because the field is modeled like a shell. Electrons and ions can go both ways indiscriminately. Now, while motion does exist up and down, the field of Earth comes out of the South Pole and wraps up, arching back down into the North. It is critical that mainstream science get behind this ion bias idea at the dayside magnetopause. Folks, it is Saturday. We've got our podcast for website members coming up. Remember, tomorrow is the last day to register for Observing the Frontier if you want a chance to win your hotel stay for free. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.